Hey, Redcon Raider here, with special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Revenant, Eloise, A Nerd in Warpaint, Dragon Matrix 7, Eerie V23, Excelsior, Goatlieb, Kazorm, Lima, Nathan Welch Jr., Thomas Piedkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Strange Horticulture, as we head into what is apparently the final day of the main campaign. This uh, might end up making for a fairly short episode, but I guess we'll see. Regardless, we've planted the seeds, we've followed our branching paths. Let's see what strange fruit awaits us at the end of this, uh, this florid fiasco. To the east of the castle, across the river and through the mountain pass, it grows at the edge of the wood. She finally had the power she had craved all these years, a servant to do as she willed, but that power came at a cost. The servant was awoken, and it would not be contained. It was the Dendru, the Dread. It was death. Yeah, we've all been there. Day 16, Saturday. Morning, Hellebore. And as for this, I imagine this is directions to the local White Castle. Okay, so they've deliberately kept this vague. Oh shoot, we still have this one too. I forgot about that. Um, alright, well, one thing at a time. Uh, I think with this one, we just need to find the right order of terrain from left to right. Uh, starting with a castle, crossing a river, through a mountain, and then to the edge of a wood. And right off the bat, it can't be Egremont because there are no rivers east of it. Gleeston Castle. And again, it can't be that one because there are no mountains east of it. Next we have Muncaster. Hmm. Which is interesting because we do have all the appropriate terrain features, they're just in the wrong order. Oh, no, wait, here we go. Scissored Castle. River, Mountain, Woods. The trees sway effortlessly in the cool breeze. The low hum of crickets chirping rides the wind. A sense of calm washes over me, and I'm rewarded with a new find. And that would be Swift Snare. It moves fast. For a plant. Yeah, I cannot possibly imagine what else this might be. That there is the, uh, the ankle binder. The never let go. Which means we, uh, we should now have all five plants we need for the ritual. Let's see here. First is the corpse's friend. Which is Devil's Nightcap. That's the one with the uh, deadly seeds. Then comes the ankle grabber, the binder, which is clearly Swift Snare. 
They even use that exact phrasing in the entry. Third is the Fearbringer, and that would be Widow's Woe. That's that plant that we got from uh, Forrest right before his his unfortunate exit. And then fourth to lift a curse. Uh, that's Long Varicund, which we gave to the uh, unfortunate woman with the cursed amulet. Which brings us to Black Blood's Reverse, which is Elder Finium. We handed that one off to Verona a while back as part of her research. So, yeah, we're in pretty good shape. And we have regained the will to explore, so uh, let's check this out, too. Uh, apparently, I um, I just forgot about this one. And I do remember now, it's because I couldn't figure out what a tributary was. And it turns out it was this. With this being its source. I've never seen this plant before. And here it is growing in abundance. Pretty. A somewhat damp smell. Dark red flowers. Musty odor. Cup-like flowers. That might have been uh, a decoy for Mountain Astery. Verona Green, the Occult Scholar. It is time. The Servant is on the move again. Time to act. Meet me at the Ritual Site. I hope for all our sakes that you've been able to track down all the plants we need. I have. Uh, I was not expecting things to kick off so quickly. But, um... Yeah, yeah, I think I'm ready. Wow, I was really expecting a bit more build-up. Um... I mean, like, uh, Faye. Her thing never really ended up going anywhere. What if we, uh, ring in another customer? Right, right, right. We must act before it is too late. Gather the plants and meet me at the ritual site. Yeah, yeah, I'm on it. Sorry. A small stone shrine sits off to one side of the clearing. Five grooves run out from the center of the stone, widening into recesses at the base. Five slots for five plants. Ooh, that's no. All right, well, we've got all five plants. Um, I don't know if there's supposed to be a specific order, but I'm just going to... Start at the top and go around clockwise. So, uh, we need Corpse's Friend. That was... Devil's Nightcap. Uh, the Ankle Grabber, the Binder, the Never Let Go. That is Swift Snare. The Fear Bringer. That's Widow's Woe. Uh, fourth to lift a curse, Long Barricund. And... Last to pedal to secure Black Blood's reverse. Elder Finium. Alright. Time to save the world. Uh, or not. Four out of five correct. What did we get wrong? It can't be Long Varican. That one's confirmed. Yeah, same with Elder Finium. Both of those are obvious matches, so th that can't be the mistake. Hmm. Devil's Nightcap is specifically listed as the corpse's friend, so that must be right, too. And I, I'm pretty sure that's Swift Snare. Yeah, yeah, Swift Snare is obvious. Uh, Elder Finium, Long Varicant, those have to be right. 
So that means I mistagged either Devil's Nightcap or Widow's Woe. No, no, that seems right. I mean, that appears to be a pretty clear match. Uh, smells like pine needles. The leaves are very similar, so it must be Widow's Woe. Also called Kenfoot. Okay, okay, wait. I tagged this one mainly because of the long leaves and the dainty dark flowers, but but the first clue in the description is about the smell. And we just found a plant with... Uh... No, not that one. Yeah, yeah, a much closer match on the leaves. And a musty scent. Damp smell, dark red flowers. Okay, yeah, I guess that is a pretty clear mismatch. So this is Widow's Woe. I have no idea what the other one is. Let's get those retagged. And then, you know, uh, save the world. There we go, and we are saving the world. Take two. Wait, was it not Widow's Woe? I grabbed the wrong plant, I grabbed Weeping Bell. Okay, right, right. Yes, that would explain it. And saving the world, take three. <laughs> Third time's the charm. I'm just imagining Verona staring at me this whole time. Well done. I will take it from here. I stand back and watch as Verona walks around the shrine, muttering soft incantations. It feels like a long time passes before she looks up, but in reality it was perhaps only ten minutes. Nothing's happening. What do you mean, nothing's happening? Haven't we got the right plants? Uh, yes, probably. I think so. Perhaps we just need to be patient. A loud noise behind us makes us all jump. Turning around, I see something that makes my blood run cold. The woman in the jade mask is walking calmly and slowly towards us from the other side of the clearing. Behind her, standing tall and terrifying, is the black silhouette of the servant. Yeah, yeah, that, that's not ideal. What was that about being patient? I think we're out of time. Do not be afraid. I am here to surrender willingly. The servant cannot be allowed to... Ah! The award. The creature lunges forward and brings a huge arm scything towards her. Her scream pierces the cold air, and she drops to her knees, clutching her head. But the blow seems to glance off to one side as it comes hurtling down and the beast's claws ends up embedded in the dirt instead of the woman's back. I can't hold it back much longer. You need this! She throws a small vial of red liquid, which Reuben deftly catches and holds up to the light. Blood. Quickly, I know what to do. Verona grabs the vial and fumbles to get the stopper out as she turns back to the shrine. The servant has its huge arm free again, and is slowly advancing with strange, jerking movements. Verona pours the blood into a small cavity in the shrine, and everything seems to happen at once. 
A pillar of bright white light launches out of the shrine towards the servant and hits it in the chest. The huge beast shrieks and staggers backwards, drowning out the screams of the woman in the jade mask who is clutching her head and writhing in agony on the ground. There is an almighty thunderclap and a blinding flash of light, and suddenly, the servant is gone. A patch of charred ground smolders where it stood just moments before. My head is spinning at what just happened. Did it work? Have we defeated the servant? Friday. With the dust settled and the servant vanquished, I have been able to reflect on the events of the last few weeks. We were fortunate that Thea was able to stay in control of the beast for as long as she did. Who can say what would have happened if she was unable to prevent it from causing the destruction it craved? Undermere has never felt so jubilant, so full of life. All the nervous tension that had built up evaporated in an instant, and the people have plowed their energy into celebration and merriment. They do not know the whole truth, of course, that Thea, the woman in the jade mask, was the one who summoned the servant. I promised Reuben that I would leave it to him to unravel that mess. She is his daughter, after all. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, they did kind of hint at that. And as for myself, well, I'm back in the calm of strange horticulture, of course, with Hellebore for company. It's quieter around here, but I am content, and there are always more plants to learn about and discover. The Sleeping Dendru It is done. The servant can go back to being a dark story for dusty shelves. Ending 2, Elder Finium. Reuben Ward, the investigator, alive, attempting to reconnect with his daughter. Verona Green, the occult scholar, alive. She regularly visits you for advice. You have become firm friends. Bethany Coleman, the sister, deceased, killed by the servant. Faye Swift, the psychic, alive. She has not dreamed of the servant since you performed the ritual. Ennis Aylford, the cultist, in hiding, has not been seen since the defeat of the servant. There are rumors he is living in Rydal Cave once again. Forrest Vare, the hunter, wounded. Both his body and his pride have been damaged, but he lives. The award the woman in the jade mask, in hiding. Ashamed of her actions that caused so much pain and death, it is unlikely she will ever fully recover from the trauma. Isidore Burbage, the barrister, insane. A shadow of his former self, he stays indoors, muttering to the walls. Well, let that be a lesson to you not to join cults and let them remove parts of your brain, because that is almost certainly what happened to you. Um, yes, well, we'll stick with that. That is probably what happened to him. Look, it was supposed to just give him amnesia, okay? I do wonder, though, if uh, he would have played a greater role in the story had I not messed with him so much. And then, obviously, I think our misstep with Bethany was, was placing the wrong offering at the Shrine of Arduina. I'm, uh, I'm less certain about Faye, though. I mean, I feel like she should have played some greater purpose in the game, but... Maybe she was like a backup. If, uh... If we hadn't ended up going the ritual route somehow. Maybe if we had joined the cultists, or... I don't know, I mean... Obviously, joining the cultists would have led to a very different series of events towards the end. Maybe Burbage did actually join the cult, or maybe he was always part of the cult, and I just never saw it because... because I refused to poison Forrest. Maybe that's why they asked me to poison... poison Forrest in the first place. Because they knew I had a propensity for poisoning people. 
Oh, and there's our credits. So it is well and truly the end. Fair enough. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll let this run for a moment whilst I, I formulate some final thoughts. Man, so, uh, Strange Horticulture. What a unique game. Hey, Kaiser. It's funny, I, uh, I don't actually remember how I quite got onto this game in the first place. It's not something that would normally pop up on my usual feeds. But I think I just saw someone retweet it on social media, and it seemed like such a... Kaiser, don't... Kaiser. It seemed like a unique concept. I like the art style. Please, can I... <laughs> Okay, there we go. He's sitting down. Thank you, Kaiser. Um, um, yeah, he uh, he saw me take my hands off my mouse and keyboard, and I, I guess he just assumed that meant it was safe to, to occupy the space directly in front of me on my desk. And I can't blame him. It is a good opening. Anyway, um, man, I'm not. I don't remember what I was saying. Uh. I guess, I guess, yeah, yeah, it, it just seemed like such a unique concept. And I like the art style, and of course there's a cat, so, you know, my curiosity was piqued, I tried it out. And it is a very interesting game. It, uh, it isn't quite a visual novel, it's not a shop sim like some people have built it as. I said it a couple of times throughout the series, but uh, yeah, it is essentially ASMR the game. There are so many aspects of it that are just built to be soothing in various ways. The story is interesting and darker than I thought it would be, but uh, but a lot of the focus just goes into soothing mechanics, the sounds of rain, rolling thunder, the, uh, the reward of identifying and sorting various strange plants and solving relatively simple puzzles, and of course Hellebore. But yeah, I very much enjoyed this. A uh, very short game, but I don't mind that. It's a nice change of pace from the sprawling epics I normally cover. And this way, it, uh, it doesn't outstay its welcome, so to speak. I now have room in my schedule for some other oddball indie game, so I'll start looking at my options. Anyway, I, uh, I have been told that there is some post-campaign content, so let's give that a gander. Earlier? Are you sure about that? This very much feels like later. Yep, yep, they even scattershot our ritual plants across our shelves. One second, let me get these straightened out. Yeah, so from what I'm seeing on my desk, we've got two more puzzles. And we've got a counter now for the number of plants we have identified. Apparently, we've got like 20 plants, just shy of 20 plants, that we have not positively ID'd. Uh, these are probably all plants that we would have run across had we pursued one of the other end paths. Or which I guess we would have positively ID'd if, um, if we had chosen them during earlier choices throughout the game. Since, of course, in those cases we had to select one of two options and only the one we selected was confirmed. All right, let's see here. Have you ever heard of the Monastery of the Black Veil? I think it would interest you. I learned of it from a man from Ravenglass. If you're ever in that part of the world, you should ask him about it. He owns the Horseshoe Inn on Main Street. I have to assume that note is from Amos Duncan. It has a very, uh, it has a very Amos feel to it. I notice the uh, bell is flashing too. Simone Green, the librarian. It's good to see you too, Hellebore. It has been a while. You seem as relaxed as ever, though. Nothing ever phases you, does it? I must admit, I've been buried in my books and seem to have missed all the excitement. 
I hear you and your plants had a part to play, though. I've been collating some information on a selection of plants for a little book I'm putting together. I was hoping you could help me finish identifying all these plants. Let's start with a moonlight flower, Bella Knox. I've always loved that one. Bella Knox. So we are starting with a flower I don't think we've ever heard of. Huh. Yeah, I guess that's what the clues are for. Okay. Game on, Simone. Okay, so I think we're done with this one. That was mostly just for the ritual stuff. So we can probably archive that. Then we have this, which is... Less a puzzle and more just straight-up instructions to go visit Ravenglass. And we have this, which is a puzzle, but looks very straightforward. Square grid, just like the map. Triangles are mountain markers. Circles are settlement markers. Here we go. White Barrow, Meat Hop, Arnside, Scissored Castle. Which would place the X here. The sun is low in the sky. I am tired after a long day. I have earned this reward. Sorry to keep you waiting, Simone. I just had to uh, hike across the entire country to collect this for you. I'm sure you understand. Long, thin leaves, quite rigid. Aroma is sharp and citric. That kind of looks like Lyle of Neptune, but I don't remember it having leaves that prominent. Petals, I mean, not, uh, not leaves, petals. But visually, it is very similar. I guess the illustration could be the plant before the petals have fully grown. Yeah, and I would say the, uh, the acrid citric scent does qualify as a strong scent. I guess we'll tag it. Though it is not what we were looking for. We were looking for Bella Knox. Bella Knox. That's like a, a classic noir name. So I guess it would make sense that we find that at a place like the, uh, the Monastery of the Black Veil. Or Ravenglass. That's pretty noir, too. I don't think we've ever had any clues that have pointed us towards Ravenglass. Oh yeah, there it is. Just north of Boodle. I am met by a man with a thick black beard and kind eyes, who is delighted to have found a willing ear to listen to a story. You won't find the Monastery of the Black Veil vale marked on any map. They don't want to be found. The Monastery was on the edge of a wood. I remember that much. We must have been heading west because I could feel the sun on my face. And it was evening. We crossed two rivers. Then we followed a river for a while. Uh, I could hear it to my left as we traveled. They left me here in Ravenglass. And I've stayed ever since. As I turn to leave, he adds... Here, if you're serious about going, you'd better have this. Why, thank you.
the Elixir of the Black Veil. And a copy of his very vague directions. Though the fact that he gave us this um, recipe seems to imply we should probably make this before we go there. No seed will grow that does not wither. No water will languish upon the river. No man will last forever hail. We all will wear the blackened veil. Leaf of the Storian, dark flower of the tomb, stench of the twilight. Pardon me, Simon. Sorry. She is very patient. Tomb. Tomb. Uh, twilight. Tomb. And there we have it. One elixir of the Black Veil. Come to think of it, we, uh, we never did get much use out of that brewing kit. It feels like an underutilized mechanic. Though I suppose this is strange horticulture, not strange brew. Dark. Yes, thank you, me. Helpful as always. And of course, our plants got. Actually, no, it just dumped them all right here. That's actually not too bad. Let me just sort them back in real quick. Okay, let's find ourselves a hidden monastery. I think this is simplest if we work backwards from Ravenglass. Uh, followed a river to the right of Ravenglass. That would be the River Esk. but then also cross two rivers. We would be traveling east if we're going backwards. Oh, um, yep, yep, okay. We do have a forest just across from us over near Torver. but no real clues about exactly where we would cross. I mean, I guess he can't be too far because he didn't say anything about mountains. Three figures, their faces hidden behind black coverings, come out to meet me. The figure on the left speaks first. The monks of the Black Vale know of the horticulturist. Then the one in the center of the group adds, they will share their knowledge if they receive the payment. The final member of the trio stays silent. Yeah, I can do that. The third member of the trio accepts the elixir, and together they disappear into the monastery. Sometime later, they return with a stack of parchment. Nice, wow, okay, thanks. Yeah, I'm guessing that's all the uh, plants we did not find entries for. Ones we might have obtained as parts of other quests, I guess. I do like this. Again, uh, ASMR the video game. It would be unsatisfying to not finish filling out your strange book of plants. And I like that they worked doing it into like a, a post-game side quest. They put a lot of thought into how this all fits together. Five pages, that's not too bad. 
Poliscus. Brevifolia tholi. The poliscus flower is crushed into a paste to cure coughs and sore throats. This author can attest that the supposed cure does not work. Oh, goodbye. That's fine. I see an entry for Bella Knox there. Bella Knox. Caligo Formosus. The moonlight flower, dark, mysterious, and beautiful, has enchanted people for centuries. It is thought to send people mad with obsessive desire, seductively luring them to their deaths, like a siren's call. Very uh, culty. I bet that was part of Ennis Aylford's quest. He does seem the type. Here you go. Spring wax cap. That's a mushroom, isn't it? It is indeed. And that one I do not have to keep you waiting two days for. There we go. Spring wax cap. Nice. Ah, Haveridge. Some romantic soul once gave me a stem of Haveridge. I think I offended the poor boy when I gagged on the scent. He took it as a bad omen. Yeah, I can imagine he would, given that this is a world where... where supernatural mega plants do in fact exist. But yes, I do have some. Please try not to gag. Hmm. I think I'll give Fool's Midnight a miss. Thanks. That's a new one. Fool's Midnight. Fool's Midnight. Nox Fatus. Used by some as an aphrodisiac, though the potent sulfuric aroma is enough to put off most. This dark mushroom has a fleshy underbelly, said to have a unique sharp taste to those brave enough to try it. Uh, I'm going to say it's probably the only mushroom we have left. It smells rotten, which is sulfuric, so yeah, fool's midnight. Oh, demel sounds nice. I wonder if that's what my mom puts in her tea. I've often thought she must have a secret ingredient that makes it extra soothing. Demel. Yeah, I don't think we... I don't think we have that one either. see here. Demel. Demis Splendor. This unremarkable flower is related to the common thistle. Its leaves are occasionally brewed into a tea that is used to calm anxiety. Right, and that is obviously the only thistle plant we have, which just happens to have the right shaped leaves. Yeah, that... That fits to a T. Though the price be steep. Lesser Mary Doc? I don't know that one. Trust me, you're better off that way. Lesser Mary Doc is not... Not a plant you want to be overly familiar with. Honestly, I probably shouldn't even have it in my shop. That's the, uh, the perpetual stupefaction plant. It says here that Umbrella smells of strawberries. There are so many conflicting aromas in this shop, I can't pick it out. Yeah, it must be a nightmare in there. But yes, they do have it.
I've never even heard of Vavulam. Which one was that? Stimulates the senses and rejuvenates aching bones. Penny Bell next. Really? That's all you have to say about that one? Yeah, I've got some... Some pacifier plant. That's the one that causes uh, fatal addictions. Kind of glad no one ever asked for it. My mother often uses birdum leaves in her cooking. She's too stubborn for superstitions. Birdum. I barely knew him. Birdum. Abula gilvis. Thick birdum leaves make a tasty addition to soups and stews. Superstitious folks won't allow birdum into their homes, as it is believed to bring bad luck. Cool, cool. And I, I've had this in my shop how long? You know what? That might uh, actually explain a few things. Another herbal remedy for sore throats that doesn't work. Oh well, let's see what it looks like at least. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the one we just read about. Yes, Poliscus. Which by uh, process of elimination I guess would be this one. Again, I'm guessing that was just a decoy for uh, other, other similar plants with long leaves like Widow's Woe. Or, um... Mile of Neptune. Though I could also see a scenario where someone like Isidore Burbage would request it, only to complain that it doesn't work afterwards. And speaking of Lyle of Neptune. I am very curious what Lyle of Neptune would have been used for. That was the uh, truth-telling plant. So, perhaps to coax secrets from a reluctant cultist. Or an uncooperative occult scholar, perhaps? Or investigator? I mean, I could see... I could see siding with the cultists pitting you against several of the people we ended up working with. Bishop's Parasol is next. Yep, got that right here. Butterdale. I don't know that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the, uh... That was the decoy for the Warrior's Plant. Carnivorous Torin. I don't know that one. Which is honestly for the best, but yes, I do have it. Handle with care, please. This, I have found out, was apparently part of um, a quest where you may have, you know, ended up with a body on your hands. It would allow you to uh, resolve that problem. Riddle. I don't know that one. Well, I do. Well, that seems to be all of them. You know, I think you've earned the right to call yourself an experienced horticulturist. Thank you. It's true. I am a man of horticulture.
Uh, let's go ahead and get the rest of these tagged in blue, just for the sake of satisfaction. I am not one to leave things half finished. Oh wait, I missed. I missed these two. And with that, it is complete. Our book has been filled, our shelves fully stocked with strange and highly deadly plants. Also, we uh, saved the world, so, you know, there's that. Not bad for our first month in Undermere. And end of day. Good night, Hellebore. All right, folks. Whilst uh, I have loved playing Strange Horticulture, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. Keep in mind, there are other endings, so it may be worth playing yourself. And if you'd like to uh, help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon. As always, links are in the description.